because what we have here is HTML. Look here on the board. HTML file. It's selected. This blue means it's selected. There's the start. There's the end. You'll always know the end by the forward slash. And you can see that this one has got in the header, it says my best game. And I will change that to be my best scratch game. So what we're going to do is learn how to put a scratch game in our HTML. Some of you, if you practice your coding, would be familiar with this. How to type this out. The iframe. There's the ending of the iframe. So you'll see that this is the iframe. And the ending of the iframe. In Purple Mesh, they use iframes. And there's lots of other things in HTML. And if you ever get stuck, just look at some of the documentation on the internet. Because Matthew, I see when I went around with lessons, I saw he was looking up stuff. And that's good. You, if you want to be a really good coder, you must learn to look up stuff. If you look over here, this is the address. And here's the address of our Scratch game. Now, these games are unique. They can only be in a, a studio. So watch how I'm going to put a scratch game into my own HTML. So I'm, I quite like the color, color of this popsicle never melts. So let's click on that. And I'm opening the scratch game. I want to make this shared game. It's a shared game. I want to make it in my own HTML. Now, you need to have a studio. To do this, add, what does it say there? Add, add to studio. studio. So I'm going to go click on it. And if you remember correctly, I had untitled studio. And there's the one with my translations. Okay, so let's go OK. So I'm saving to my studio. I pressed add to studio. And it's loading. Everything seems to be happening. Look at all this. These little icons are showing that something's working. This is not really code. It's just... Little animations to show that the computer is in the process of doing something. So it's loading the sprites and everything. Hopefully by just adding it to the studio, it's going to be placed in my studio. And then I can open it and bring it in to get the location of the file. The location of the file is going to be in my studio. You can't feed it into your HTML from somebody else's studio. So you have to put it into your studio. And that's the reason why it has to be a shared game. Someone sharing a game that they don't mind you using or changing. It's always a good thing to offer credits to people who are making games and you know it's not really your game. You don't want to pose that, oh, look, I made a game. There have been a number of learners when I looked at their games, I saw they said to me, oh, I made the game. That they just took someone else's game and they said they made the game. That's not really making a game. Making a game means you really make it. Wow, it's taking very long. It's probably a very... Anyone played this game? Because it looks like it's quite a big file. Just going to see if, if it gets into my studio. I'm going to duplicate. Look what I'm going to do now, guys. Right click, duplicate. So I'm going to make two tabs. And I'm going to go to my studio and see if the file's in there. If it's loaded. So I'm going to go to my stuff. My stuff. Wow, it's still loading. Big file. Let's go to this one. Still loading. If I go to my stuff. Look there. Guys, look. Here's my studios. See this? That's my studios. So watch. There should be a file in there. It's loaded. Big file. Uh, anyone played this game called Popsicle? I'm opening it, and as I open it, the game will start playing or get ready to play, and as you saw, it took quite a while to load. Why did it take so long to load? It's obviously got lots of code blocks, and there might even be sound effects in it. Okay, if I go down, okay, so there's quite a lot of stuff in it. Just go up. Oh, there we go. It's loaded. Look, guys. So what I want to do now is get this. There's the address. Are you guys looking? This is the address on here. 
all web pages or where something's located, this is the address bar. I right click, copy. Now I go to my HTML. And you guys will find that I've sent you an email in Purple Mash. And I take this code. Look here. I change this. Control V. And you can see it says projects, but it hasn't got embed. So forward slash, look what I'm doing. Adding a forward slash, embed. And then this forward slash over there must go out. Take that away. Now, if I go file, what was it called? Popsicle. Yeah. Save as, and what we are saving it as an HTML file. So I'm going to go popsicle game dot htm because it's going to be read by a browser and there's chrome so i'm going to go desktop save and now i'm going to open my desktop and you will see popsicle as an html file if i go down there's popsicle it's arranged alphabetically. Popsicle, it's got the Chrome browser already showing, the icon. That means that my computer knows that Chrome is going to read this file. So watch if I click on it. I open it. It'll take a while to load. It's a nice and big already. But you'll see the game will be a bit smaller in this block. And it should load. There it's loading. It's, we know that this game takes a while to load. We hope there won't be any problems because it's got extensions. And all those other extras sometimes can cause. So that means you, whatever you build in Scratch can yeah. be looked. And look at this. Andrew's going to click on it. Wow, it's got sound. Obviously, that's the reason why it's going to be taking long. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. <gasps> I, I, Is a that a popsicle I see? Right. Are you serious? Oh my, oh. I guess I'll just have to watch it on another device or something. Okay, and that's part of the game. So what happens, guys, this Popsicle game is quite a, a large file. So you guys can find a game you like. And you can play it in your own HTML. And when your mom and dad plays it, they'll say, it's amazing. You've got your own stuff there. So if I wanted to even make, we'll remember this. And Kaylee, if I go like this, what is this? H3. This is the popsicle sickle game. And then I'm going to go h forward slash h3. Now that's a header. And then I could save my HTML, save. And look over here. It should have, look, this is the popsicle game. I'm bringing in other stuff. How good is that, guys? So you're starting to make the interface your own and you're feeding in this popsicle game please guys if you use someone else's game don't do exactly what i've done do give credit to other people don't say it's your game that you made because you really i didn't really make this popsicle game i would be stealing someone else's hard work and making it as if it's my own work so i don't want to do that because i want to be a honest and fair person so i would Find out who made the Popsicle Never Melts game, and then I would indicate and say thank you. This is the people who made it, but you can make changes to it, and but always give credit to the, the creator, the person who made that game. That's all I wanted to show you. Now, you're probably wondering, what, must I type all that code? No! Don't type all the code. Go to Purple Mash. I sent you all an email when I typed it all for, for you. It's already in there. It's in your email. So you need to open the email and then just put it into your own stuff. And put your favorite Scratch game, the best game you like, into your own HTML. And then everyone's going to say, show your mom how to do it. And if I'm correct, I think it's the fourth or the fifth lesson that we are having. And I wanted to go over some of the interesting stuff that Josh taught us. Joshua is one of the most amazing and helpful learners in our school. So I'm going to show you what he taught. So please don't think that I'm the cleverest. I'm not even so clever. Josh showed me this. 
So when you think Mr. Bradley's such a good teacher, just remember, I'm only more clever on the basis of Josh. So let's show you how that works. We're going to go first of all to Notepad, because we're doing HTML. I typed in, look what I did. I went to the start, press the start, typed in N, because that's the first letter of Notepad. Clicked on Notepad, and I made my font very big. So I'm going to make my font 20, well, it's 36, I'll make it 28. About that size looks good, because I want all of you to be able to see. Uh, very small font, your eyes would be able to see it, because you've got such good eyes. And my eyes are getting older, and as your eyes get older, they seem to get worse. So I'm trying to work on my eyesight. I must do eye exercises, says Andrew. Okay, and that's quite true. Let's go HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. I love the Hypertext Markup Language because we have Tim Berners-Lee. He was the guy with his friends used to send messages to each other at a very famous science, science place called CERN where they were doing scientific experiments. And that was how the internet started. He was just, just like Andrew and he was also quite famous for computers. Although Andrew is more famous because Andrew got into the newspaper when Andrew was only in grade 2 or 3. So here, head. Josh has already done this. I'm trying to type fast now because Josh is like so far ahead of me. And head. And I'm going to put body like that. You must practice typing, eh, Illyria? If you practice typing, then you can become quite a good coder. You know, I was very lucky because my mommy used teaching typing. And then one day she showed me how to type. And I practiced the whole weekend. And when I practiced that weekend, then after that weekend, I could type fast. So it doesn't even take a lot of work. If you practice, like, just for one weekend, a little a bit of typing, you'll become quite good. So don't worry if you can't type so good. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee, he, he was the guy who made the internet. So whenever you think of HTML, you think of Tim Berners-Lee. Do you guys want to see a picture of him? Okay, I'll show you a picture of him. Go to Google. Google. And we'll show you Tim Berners-Lee. He, when he was young, he looked like Andrew. Yes, Illyrio. Girls were also good coders. And I'll show you Grace Hopper. She's, she started C++. She was amazing. She was also a very powerful coder. So here's Tim Berners-Lee. That's him now. Look, there's Tim Berners-Lee. He's quite old now. But he was the guy who really got the internet going. All right, so he looks old now. But if you look at the old... Younger pictures, he looked quite a lot like Andrew. Maybe this, if you look at people's faces, you can see if they're good coders. I don't know if that's true. But now I'm going to show you Grace Hopper, because we have a feminist in our group here. We have Illyria, who says, no, we can't always just show the boys, because some people think, oh, then the boys are always so good. Now this lady, yeah, she's when she's younger, Grace Hopper, she was the one that made C++, very powerful language. So a lot of boys think, oh, boys can only code. Then they look at Grace Hopper, who made one of the most powerful coding. And she was young when she made, like this age, you can see she's much younger. I wonder if she looks a little bit like Illyria. Maybe, um, they, like, we could have, like, famous coders, they look a bit like that. But Josh, you don't look like any of them, but you just, you're so good as well. So, and all of you are so good. Where's that other guy? He's also so good. That guy did scratch games. And he was like, yeah, this guy, amazing. Brilliant. Um, so now, guys, let's return to our notepad. Okay, those, we don't have to look at all the famous people all the time, but they're the people that make these languages like computer languages. Andrew would have probably put in his title already. And we could put in the forward slash title, Josh, like this. And then we'll go like, my best game. Okay, I'll, I'll send this to you guys on email so you don't have to type at all. I know that you hate typing. It's not always the, although I was very lucky with my mom's lessons in teaching me how to touch type that it became quite easy. Uh, you, being with such good guys, you probably think that's not an appropriate word. But I'm just using that word to take a bit of code and from Purple Mash, and I'm going to just bring it into the uh, other work here. So watch, I'm going to go to sharing. I'm going to go shared because I don't want to type the whole thing out again. So I'm going to go to say, my work. I'll go to this work over here, Illyria, and I'm going to look for the iframes. So I'm going to go Momster, my Momster game. I'm going to open it. You just go to any of your games that you saved on Purple Mash.
Now, the reason why I'm doing that is I want to steal the, and I'm using that word steal again, but I want to take the iframes out of it to bring my, my scratch game. Uh, and that's what Josh taught us. So look over here. Here it is. This is that silly face that I drew, and it doesn't even look like good. Look at my, that tooth. That tooth is there. I'm going to go on this, and that's the sharing part, and I'm looking for this embed. Now the embed. Okay, so you open it, you copy, I'm selecting it all, and I'm going to right click, but I move my pointer over the blue, the, there, over the black part, the selection, and go copy. They have copied it. Now I can, and I'm going to right click, paste. And then this, I'm going to change the address, because I'm going to bring my scratch game, and uh, some of my favorite scratch games in it. There's very few learners that know you can actually make a web page with your scratch game. There's oh, a lot of people who say, you can't do it. It's impossible. It's not possible. You can't put Scratch in. And Josh showed us you can. So last week he showed us. He's still going to do a video to show us. And Andrew probably knows. Remember, we're not really doing Scratch at the moment. HTML, but we want to bring our Scratch game. Oh, I'm going to choose one of these games. Because what Josh taught me was that I could use one of these games. Look over here. Um... This has got beautiful colors. I kind of like this one with colors. So I'm going to go here. I'm opening somebody else's game. And I'm going to put it into my studio. Now it's very important that you guys have your own studio. So watch. Did I log in? Yes, I did. So what I'm going to do now is I go, I'm going to go add to studio. And I'm going to see, look, there's one of my studios. I'm going to just put it in untitled studio. I could put it in that one in translations, and I'm going to go, okay. So now if I go to my stuff, guys, don't worry, I'm going to put this all on video so you can watch it afterwards. I've got two studios. Look, the one's called Untitled. So it's very important that you get to know how to make a studio. Andrew will know how to do it. There's a lot of people here know how to do it. We'll help you. So if I open this game, look, it's, I open the game, and I'm going to take the address. Of this game. So I'm going to open the game. Look here. Here's the address. And I'm going to copy that. The address of the file. But it must. It must be in your studio. I just opened the game. So I'll come and help you Josh and show you. So you right click. Copy. And I've copied this game that's in that studio. Now I go to my HTML file. The notepad. And look at the purple mesh. I'm going to take this address. The purple mesh game. And I'm going to replace it with a scratch. I'm replacing it with a scratch project. Now over here, I hope I'm going to get this right. Josh said I must put embed. Not embed, embed. And yeah, like that. I'm not sure, and I think I had to take away that forward slash that's there. And a lot of people don't know that. There's just two things you have to do. Now I go file. Save as, and a lot of people don't even know you can do this. You go desktop, I'm going to save it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it Andrew Coder. Dot, and what must I type now? It's a H HTM, because it's a, I want my browser to read it. So I go Andrew Coder, save. And then I'm going to test to see if it works. Go to my desktop, I'm going to open my desktop. I hope this works, otherwise you guys will say he's not even a good coder. He should have got uh, Josh to show us. Look, it's opening. Is it opening? Oh, come on, come on, come on. I want to see it opening. Yay! Look, guys, it's working. And if I click on it, look, the Scratch Games inside my website. Now, how good is that? Uh, it's not such a, I don't know if it's a good game, but I, you can see that the Scratch Games in my website. But Andrew might not like that it's so small. So what I'm going to do is stop it. Now watch carefully. Uh, right click. View page source. Illyria. Look at that. It's too small. 500 is too small and 300. So I'm going to make this one 1,000. And this one 600 like Josh showed me. No, no, you're late. Right. Now we're going to go back to our, this one. Josh, what must I make this one? 1,000. This one must be 
600, you clever children. Oh, I typed 6,000. That would have broken the internet. So I'm going to go save. And we're going to go and look again. Illyria is so excited to see if it's going to work. And we're going to open. And look over here. It's gone big already. Look. Whoa, look how big that is. Oh, that's way too big. Uh, that's way too big. Right, so if I go like this, look, the scratch game's beautiful. My mommy could play it, my daddy could go play it, and my brothers and sisters will think, you're a super genius putting a scratch game in your own website. It's not even in scratch anymore. Well, give Josh a hand. He was the guy who taught me. Okay, guys. Good luck. See if you can do that. Oh, Andrew, you're so brilliant. You probably did it already long. my own game. Good. See if you can put the game that you're making and you want to play in your own uh, website. Oh, you're amazing. Good to see you. Hey, Josh, thanks. When you want to do your, you, can you do a video? Do you want to do it tomorrow? I'm doing it. Wow, this game seems to just make more and more cats. I'm stopping it. My eyes are getting sore with all those cats. Yeah, that was, uh, 